So today I'm going to be doing a like kind of super quick update video on um, my hysterectomy that I had. I had, um, I'm just going to do like a super quick like answering some questions and telling you about my experience and how my recovery has been so far. So just getting straight into it, um, my hysterectomy was, I had a full abdominal hysterectomy and I had it done on April 8th. Sorry if I'm looking down, I have some notes over here as per usual. And um, anyways, so I had a full abdominal hysterectomy on April 8th, so just over three weeks ago. Um, it, if for the most part, it went fairly smooth. I am having some complications right now, um, but I will get into that in a few minutes. So I'm just going to talk about like the beginning parts of my surgery. So I went in there, I had to be at the hospital for 6 a.m., um, they had me in back in the OR by 8 a.m. and I was out by, I believe it was 11.30 in the morning. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I think I'm getting a cold. I th said this in my previous video too. I think I either have allergies or I'm getting a cold. Um, anyway, so they had me in the OR by 8. I was out by 11.30. Um, they gave me a shot of hydromorphine, um, I believe it was called. And I had a really, really bad um, reaction to it, like an allergic reaction or something, and I stopped breathing. So they had to resuscitate me twice. Um, that was really odd because I have taken that medicine before, like years and years ago, and I was fine. Um, this time, it didn't work out for me. So that was the first complication. Secondly, so I, they had me in um, post-anesthetic care for, I believe it was two hours because of the resuscitation, and then they had to make sure that I had come out of it and um, I was good to go to a room by myself. Um, so we did that. The person that I actually ended up sharing a room with was absolutely miserable. She had company until like midnight and then they came back at like seven or eight in the morning. So sleeping was an absolute nightmare. I woke up in the morning to like a nurse poking me, taking my blood pressure and actually taking my catheter out. I had to have my catheter in for a full 24 hours, which was super annoying because I wanted it taken out the same day because I was already walking. Um, but they refused to take it out the same day, so I had to wait until the next day. Um, what else? Um, I did talk my doctor into letting me go home um, after about 24 hours because I told her that I think that I would recover better at home. Um, I wasn't doing well in the hospital. I was having a problem with some of the nurses. Um, they weren't giving me strong enough pain medication. I was in a lot of pain. Um, I basically just told my doctor like if I if I'm not gonna get stronger pain medication and um, the extra help then I'm just gonna go home where I have the extra help and take the pain meds that I had at home um, which were actually stronger than the ones that I was taking at the hospital surprisingly enough and um I already had gone to the bathroom like before you leave the hospital they make sure that you're able to have a bowel movement and that you're able to um, like pass gas and that you're drinking properly and you're eating and walking and all of that stuff and I was doing everything right <clears throat> so my doctor let me go after only 24 hours usually they keep you for two nights but I really just wanted to go home um so I was on no narcotic pain medication I was literally just on over-the-counter Tylenol and ibuprofen um, like literally that you could buy from a grocery store or a pharmacy. Um, so I was doing actually really well on the over-the-counter pain medication. So, um, that's another reason why I just wanted to go home because if I'm doing well on, um, like bare minimum, then I felt like when I go home, I'm going to do just as great. Um, so I'm going to get to like pain levels right now. So... On a really good day, my pain is only, a, like, and this is like, it was the 8th, so we're going to call it three and a half weeks out. 
Um, on a really, really good day, the pain is only about a three out of 10. It's really not that bad, just a little bit of pain around the incision, um, that's about it. Um, on a bad day, it's about a seven or an eight out of 10, and I'm gonna tell you why. Um, so basically, about two weeks ago, I developed kind of like a drainage, and um, I think, I believe my doctor called it like a seroma, it's like seroma fluid. Um, it develops between the layers of skin, and creates a fluid pocket during healing or after surgery. And basically that's what happened to me. And I think it developed because I overdid myself when I came home from the hospital. I was vacuuming and sweeping and doing the dishwasher and doing laundry and all this stuff that I wasn't supposed to do. And I got to it really early. So I think that might have aided in why I got this fluid pocket. Um, so basically it fills up with fluid and then it just starts draining from my incision and I was soaking like big, big, big pads um, like around my tummy like five or six times a day. So now I, I'm going and I'm seeing wound care at my hospital and I have to go there every other day for two weeks now so that they um, can pack my incision because I when I went back my surgeon had to cut my incision open about a third of the way all over again so that they can pack it full of like gauze and keep it dry um, and try and heal it from the inside out so um, I have to go to the hospital every other day I've gone three times now I have a few more to go um, it is draining less and less, but it's still just super annoying having to change bandages every day. It's definitely not what I wanted to do after this surgery. I just wanted to heal up like normal, but my body had other plans. Um, my doctor said that it was like a four inch uh, seroma fluid pocket. She said she's seen them about like two to four centimeters before, but she's never seen one that was like four inches. Um, that's why she had to cut me open so much more than just like a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so that really sucks when it gets full of fluid and I can feel it filling with fluid. That's when my pain gets really, really, really high, like my pain levels. Um, but then once it drains, I'm down to like nothing. Like I don't feel any pain. So hopefully the draining um, will stop soon because it's super duper annoying. Um... Other than that, everything has been good. I've been slowly, slowly getting back to, because I was like bedridden or I had to stay on my chair with my heating pad um, and a blankie. Uh, my boyfriend was really firm about me not being able to do anything. My sister, my parents, my doctor, everybody told me don't do anything. So I haven't been, but then the last couple days I've slowly, slowly, slowly started um, doing the dishwasher again, even if it's just the top rack, and doing a little bit of laundry, just a, like I've been doing really small loads, trying to um, just keep the house caught up. My boyfriend works all day, so just trying to do little things around the house to keep up and get everything done and keep this place livable. Um, other than that, everything's been really good. I will keep you guys updated on like my fluid pocket and hopefully that is over really soon. Um, and if there's anything else I can think of to tell you guys, I'll put it in another update video. I'm going to do a six week update update video here soon. Like when I go, when I go to my six week post op, I will update you guys. Um, and six weeks post op is when I'm going to be bringing my twin boys home. Um, I've had to send them to their biological dad's house um, for the six weeks because I need to recover properly and I have twin two-year-old toddler boys so they are very 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 wild and crazy and I couldn't have them jumping on me so I will update you guys again at my six-week post-op and until then I'll see you guys in my next video bye